Yes. So in Taxon Works, we can create geo references of points or shapes, and we also reference historical data in what we call asserted distributions. And if you look at our issue tracker, you'll see that there are many different types of issues that arise with modeling and uh, sort of geo fencing. By that we mean um, mapping our specimens to the rest of the world. And so the speakers today are going to talk about different ways to help that process and give us a framework for sort of the cutting edge uh, ideas and thoughts that are being tossed around out there and not just tossed around but implemented in terms of geo geo referencing and sort of geospatially organizing our, our data um, against what we know of the world. So without further ado. Good afternoon and thanks to the organizers for giving us uh, this opportunity to present this new tool. I also need to say I am in awe about the presentations I have been able to attend these days. They are really inspiring, so thank you. And compared to them, Geopic is a humble initiative, I'm afraid. So uh, why Geopic? Well, we wanted to provide the community with a tool that helps alleviate the current problem with georeferenced collections data, a problem relating to quality and completeness. As a researcher in the ecology and genetics of Arabidopsis thaliana, I want to know the plant's distribution, which factors determine it, and possibly how climate change may affect its range. To model the plant's distribution, we want to tap into the enormous wealth of information available through GBIF, especially data on preserved specimens from natural history collections. So we go and visit the GBIF data portal and are happy to see that there are close to 21,000 records of preserved specimens. However, our initial excitement is lowered when we discover that only about half of them have coordinates. Anyway, we proceed to download them, but feel further disappointed when we realize that only half have their uncertainty documented. Thus, we end up discarding 75% of the available records, since we do, not, we do need to know the uncertainty to carry out rigorous uh, distribution modeling. While digitizing collections data is time consuming and expensive, uh, but it is of utmost importance that the final result is not only faithful to the original collected specimen, but complete in, in information and knowing the spatial uncertainty is, is of special relevance. Unfortunately, when we use collections data from GBIF, this example is not an exception, but the norm. In, anal in an analysis of GBIF data on preserved specimens, we found that despite the positive trend in the available number of preserved specimens data, as shown here uh, in the gray area, Data with coordinates, as shown in the blue area, also grow but do not catch up with the former. And data with a documented uncertainty, the reddish area, despite a slightly growing trend, falls behind in catching up with that with coordinates. Uncertainty documentation does not take off in this data. And knowing uncertainty for these matters is crucial. <clears throat> in that same study, we did some simulations on the effects of including the uncertainty in our models. One of the three examples in our study is the tropical tree uh, Wathuma ulmifolia, which extends from northern Mexico to northern Argentina. We saw in our simulations that range estimates can vary by a factor of even more than two when uncertainty is taken into account. Of course, if not taken, the result is much worse since you wouldn't even notice these caveats. This has consequences when carrying out studies such as estimations of effects due to climate change or assessment of conservation statuses. So we wondered why georeferencing data is still poor if standards and protocols have been available for many years. To shed light into the reasons behind, we conducted a global survey on georeferencing practices and organized an international workshop where these matters were discussed and some recommendations for action followed. 
in the survey, 44% of respondents reported not using any protocol and 30% only an in-house developed protocol. Furthermore, 49% said they were not reporting uncertainty at all. Among the workshop recommendations following the survey, it was proposed the development of friendlier interoperable tools, which help promote the point radius method and the documentation of uncertainty. And thus Geopic, which we hope enriches the current landscape of tools and provides an effective way to generate standard compliant, complete georeferences. I will now launch a recorded demo for you to get a sense on the look and feel of the tool. So please allow me. Sorry. This is the main window of Geopic. All the screen is occupied by a world map, which we can control using the left sidebar. We have the typical controls for layer visibility, allowing us to choose between OpenStreetMap and Big Maps cartography. We have controls for zooming in and zooming out of the map, for digitizing lines, polygons, and points, controls for editing and deleting those geometries, and two extra controls for working with geometries in well-known text format and for entering point data with the keyboard. On the top of the screen we have a search bar with which we can search and import localities from OpenStreetMap data from around the world. On the right we have a collapsible info box where the data and metadata from our georeference site will be displayed. It complies with Darwin core format and can be easily exported as we will later see. The links to the corresponding Darwin core field are provided. Finally, at the bottom left corner, Geopic offers us the typical information on coordinates and the scale of the map. Let's now take a look at how to georeference a locality. We zoom in to the Norfell Peninsula of Cap de Creus in northeastern Catalonia, Spain, which will be our digitizing target. We select the polygon tool and start digitizing its perimeter with mouse clicks. Here for demo purposes, I'm just doing a very coarse digitization as an example. To finish the polygon, we click again on top of the first vertex. Once the polygon is closed, Jopic processes the geometry and provides us with the point radius data. You can see the centroid and the circle of uncertainty defined by the radius. We can see in the info box panel the point or centroid the coordinate uncertainty and the spatial fit among other Darwin core fields. Then we type our name and provide any georeference remarks we may have and we are done. Once finished we can easily export the data in spreadsheet format with or without headers. Since this represents our first export we will copy the data with headers. We go to the spreadsheet and paste from the clipboard and there we have the georeference site in Darwin Core format. We will now use the well-known text utility to import a locality for which a corrected centroid is necessary as it is recommended in Chapman and Wixorex's Georeferencing Best Practices manual. The locality is in the west coast of Angola near Luanda and represents a segment of the Luanda River. We click on the WKT button, paste our location in this format, click on the OK button and Geopic processes it. As you can see, 
A corrected center that sits on top of the geometry has been calculated by Geopic. Otherwise, it would have fallen outside the river segment. You can see the new georeference site data in the info box panel as before. Our name is still there, and again we write down our comments if needed. We copy it, this time without headers, go to the spreadsheet and paste it again. This way you can grow your list of georeference sites using Geopic and the spreadsheet. Another feature of Geopic I wanted to show you in this demo is how to easily capture geometries from OpenStreetMap data. Suppose we have a Bubuk owl for which we only know it was collected in King Island in northwestern Tasmania. We can type the location in Geopic search bar, choose it from the list and it will return as the perimeter of the island. Now we just need to capture this geometry by clicking on the import button and Geopic provides us with all the georeference location data with its centroid and radius of uncertainty. A thing worth mentioning is that along with all the georeferencing data and metadata Geopic also exports the georeference site in WKT format corresponding to the footprint WKT Darwin Core field. Finally, by clicking on the About link in the info panel, you can learn more about Geopix features. A link to the GitHub repository is also provided at the end of the page. Again, in the info box panel, there's a link with which you can access the help uh, documentation of Geopic. Okay, <clears throat> so that was the demo of uh, Geopic. Uh, the tool is now available at the address above, and we greatly appreciate the support given by, uh, Geo by GBIF in hosting it. The tool is open source, and you can use it, contribute to it, or provide feedback by accessing the GitHub account and, and raise an issue or give comments. Thank you.